In the 1980s, the Israeli government and intelligence agency Mossad began monitoring the activities of a Palestinian man who started what they saw as a radical new movement. His name was Dr. Fatih Shakaki. He founded Islamic Jihad, which was responsible for several attacks in the 1980s and 90s, making Shakaki a wanted man. It's always the question, what are the motives that Israel is considering when deciding to kill someone? Now, if you, would, if, you would, if you would ask Mossad or the political level, they will all answer, no, no, this is not about revenge. This is only in looking towards the future and not back to the past. Everyone who has Jewish blood on his hand is a legitimate target for red sheet, legitimate target for assassination. Now, from being a legitimate target and being killed, there's a huge gap which involves operational capabilities, operational co considerations, uh, the, the validity of intelligence, and of course, the political level decision and authorization. But from their point of view, everyone who was involved in killing Jews should be assassinated. Are you calling this a revenge? Yes. Mossad is the Israeli National Intelligence Agency, the equivalent of the American CIA and the British MI6. It was formally set up in 1949 and two years later reorganized to report directly to the office of the Prime Minister. Israel perceives itself as surrounded by hostile neighbors and at the constant risk of internal and external attack. So Mossad is known to have carried out the extrajudicial killing of many figures seen as a threat. Hence, many of its victims have been Arabs and particularly Palestinians, like Fatih Shakaki. This is the story of Islamic Jihad its founder, Dr. Fatih Shakaki, and the controversial way he met his death in a street in Malta in 1995. <laughs> Fatih Shkaki is a very famous uh, figure in Palestinian history uh, and a very, very famous figure and one of the most wanted terrorists in the uh, history of Israeli counter-terrorism uh, war. Uh, Fatih Shkaki was considered to be a religious but also an operational authority in Palestine, Palestinian territories in Gaza and in the West Bank. And he started to launch attacks against Israeli settlers, against Israeli soldiers. From that point on, until the assassination of Fatih Shkaki, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad became one of the most important uh, guerrilla slash terrorist organizations that worked against Israel. Shakaki's refugee family had fled to Gaza in 1948. And after becoming a maths teacher, he moved to Egypt to study medicine. Already a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, he continued to embrace their policy of reforming politics by creating a society governed by Islamic laws and morals. But the Muslim Brotherhood did not believe the time was right for military action against Israeli occupation. Shikaki began fundamentally to disagree, and so he left to form his own organization. He founded Palestinian Islamic Jihad in 1981, jihad meaning struggle 
in Arabic. It was the first Islamic resistance group to be founded within Gaza and the occupied West Bank. Its stated aim was to fight the existence of Israel and establish an Islamic Palestinian state within the pre-1948 boundaries of Palestine. It rejected the political process and advocated violent means if necessary. كانت هناك التيارات الوطنية وكانت هناك التيارات القومية واليسارية لكن الإسلاميين كانوا غائبين عن ساحة الصراع الأهم وبالتالي ربما أبرز ما جاء به الشقاقي ضمن ما جاء به من أفكار جديدة هو ملامسة الإسلام للواقع ومحاولة تفعيل دور الإسلام في القضايا بخصوص القضايا التي يعيشها الناس وأخطر وأهم هذه القضايا هي القضية الفلسطينية من أواخر السبعينات من أوائل الثمانينات بدأت إرهاصات من هذا النوع تتعلق في ضرورة أن يعني تتشكل تنظيمات إسلامية فلذلك عندما كان يفكر بتشكيل مشروعه لم يكن يضيف إلى تنظيمات إسلامية موجودة مشروعا جديدا وإنما كان سباقا حقيقة إلى جانب آخرين كانوا في السباق أيضا في محاولة لبناء مشاريعه من الناحية الفكرية كان من بدايته اعتقد دكتور فتح أن الشباب الفلسطيني ذوي الخلفيات الإسلامية يجب أن ينخرطوا في الصراع ضد إسرائيل وكان يعتقد هو من اللي ابتدع أو بدع ونحت بالأحرى بعض المصطلحات منها مثلا أنه فلسطين هي القضية المركزية للأمة الإسلامية أنه يجب أن يكون الجهد الأساسي الإسلامي منصب على تحرير فلسطين منها العبارة الرائعة أنه فلسطين نقطة التماس بين تمام الحق وتمام الباطل Palestinian Islamic Jihad began its armed operations against Israeli targets in 1984. Its activities led to Shikaki's frequent interrogation by the Israeli army. And in 1986, he was sentenced to four years imprisonment, plus a further five years of suspended sentence. But Shikaki continued to try and coordinate operations and recruit new cells from within prison. Islamic Jihad's name is well known, but it's always been quite a small organization. First all, אפשר יהיה להגיע למצב שפלסטין מהירדן עד הים תהיה אחת ואחר כך בעזרת השם היא תהפוך לחלק מחליפות אסלאמית גדולה. Then two crucial events took place within months of each other that shaped the course of Shikaki's future and of Palestinian opposition to Israeli occupation. First, in October 1987, six members of Islamic Jihad tunneled out of the Saraya prison in Gaza and escaped. The Israelis responded to this unusual security breach by tracking the six to the Shuja'iya area of Gaza City. A fierce battle broke out and four of the Islamic Jihad men were killed. The other two killed the Israeli military police chief in Gaza. Although still in jail, Shikaki was interrogated about these events, which would go on to have far-reaching consequences. This operation was a point of change in the events of the events, and even from the Israeli officials, مثل زئيف شيف ويهودي عاري وضعا كتابا هاما اسمياه انتفاضة يتحدثان فيه عن أن معركة الشجاعية معركة ليلة السادس من تشرين أول أكتوبر كانت هي البداية الحقيقية لما عرف لاحقا باسم الانتفاضة
The first Palestinian intifada, meaning uprising, broke out on the 8th of December 1987 in the Gaza Strip. Islamic Jihad supported and played a prominent role in the mass protest movement, which lasted nearly four years across Gaza and the occupied West Bank. A further group also emerged from the Muslim Brotherhood at this time, calling itself the Islamic Resistance Movement, Hamas. Meanwhile, Shikaki spoke of being inspired by one of the earliest Palestinian resistance figures of the 1920s, Izzadeen al Qassam. <laughs> يعني هو في نقطة يعني إحنا تناقشت أنا معه فيها في تفسير وفي فهم لماذا انحجبت الحركات الإسلامية عن أن تنخرط في المقاومة الفلسطينية في فترة أواخر الستينات وطوال فترة السبعينات الحقيقة أنا تحليلي كان في ذلك الوقت أن المشكلة ليس يعني ليس ذنب ذنبها وإنما كانت موازين القوى الفلسطينية والعربية والعالمية لا تسمح ولا تتقبل وجود تنظيم إسلامي مجاهد لذلك عندما جاء يعني الدكتور فتحي ونضجت عنده الفكرة وأصبح بده يدخل إلى العمل تم ذلك بعد التسعة وسبعين بعد الثمانين حقيقة لأمي ربما كان في تنظيمات قبل أو مشروع بس الدخول في المشروع وبدء التفكير فيه جديا كان هذا لاحق ولذلك أنا بتحليلي كان هناك ميزان قوى جديد بدأ يتشكل لم يكن موجودا في السابق لذلك أنا بعتقد أنه الدكتور فتحي التقط لحظة تاريخية فاصلة في التغيير الذي حدث في داخل الساحة الفلسطينية وطرح موضوعا هو موضوع الجهاد في فلسطين وقد جاء بعد أن قد استهلك تستهلكت الفصائل المقاومة في مراحلها السابقة وأعطت ما عندها وبدأت في مرحلة يعني الانحدار اللي أوصل إلى أوسلو بالنهاية ولكن من كثرة استهلاك الكلام بات علينا أن نبحث عن لغة منتجة لغة تصنع الفعل والثورة لغة معجونة بالعرق وبالدم as the Intifada spread and gathered momentum, it represented an increasing threat and thorn in the side of the Israeli military and intelligence services. The imprisonment of a leading Palestinian resistance figure didn't seem to have stemmed his influence. And this brought about the second key event for Fatih Shakaki. In what in retrospect looks like an odd decision, the Israelis decided to release him only two years into his four-year jail sentence. They deported him to South Lebanon, where it's reported he was in touch with the Shia Islamic group Hezbollah and possibly with Iranian contacts. Fatih Shkaki was going in and out of jail, in and out of the, in and out of the interrogation cells of the Shin Bedi, Israeli internal secret service, uh, for a very long time, until Israel made the critical, I would say even to the extent of strategic error, and decided to expel Fatah Shkaki. Now the reason why Israel did that was of course to get rid of the risk, but the outcome was a much empowered risk. Because in Lebanon, they were given the hospice, the funding, the financing, the training, and the overall support of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. But Shakaki's stay in Lebanon was relatively short, and in 1989 he moved to Syria. In Damascus, he would seek a close working relationship with the government of Syrian President Hafiz Assad. He was pushing at an open door. أذكر جيدا بأننا عندما جاءنا في تلك المرحلة أردنا أن يعني نشق له قناة اتصال مع القيادة السورية في ذلك الوقت 
وجاءنا ونحن في الجبهة اعتبار موجودون في سوريا منذ تاريخ ولنا علاقات وثيقة مع القيادة السورية فنقلنا للقيادة السورية عن شخصية الدكتور فتح الشقاقي الحقيقة في البداية ترددوا قليلا في تقبل هذا الفكر وهذا النهج وهذا البرنامج ثم كلفت من 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 جبهتي يعني من قيادة الجبهة أن أهيئ له وأرتب له وأشترك معه في لقاء مع أحد كبار المسؤولين السوريين يعني وذهبنا سويا إلى هذا المسؤول الرفيع الحقيقة فبالتالي كان قرار القيادة السورية في ذلك الوقت الاستجابة والتجاوب مع مطلب الدكتور فتحي وبدأت العلاقة الرسمية بينه وبين القيادة في سوريا Shikaki based himself and his organization here in the Yarmouk Palestinian refugee camp in Damascus. Islamic Jihad was growing into what the Israelis considered to be the most extreme Palestinian group. One experienced European commentator later described it as perhaps the fiercest of all Israel's modern day enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Arafat, Chairman of the Executive Council of the Palestine Liberation Organization, His Excellency Yitzhak Rabin. Shikaki was certainly deeply opposed to the mainstream peace process, as well as to the agreement brokered secretly by Norwegian diplomats between Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and PLO leader Yasser Arafat, the Oslo Accords. هو حتى قبل أوسلو الحقيقة نحن منذ ما قبل مدريد عام 91 مدريد كما تعلموا بأكتوبر 91 قبل مدريد كنا قد بدأنا نتواصل مع بعضنا البعض لتشكيل جبهة عريضة في الساحة الفلسطينية تقف في وجه المساعي التي وصلت إلى مسامعنا عن تسوية أو تصفية القضية الفلسطينية فشكلنا هذه الجبهة العريضة وخرجنا بفلسطينيا ب ائتلاف اطلقنا عليه تسميه الفصائل العشر عشر فصائل بالساحه الفلسطينيه كان لي اخي المرحوم دكتور فتح الشيخ دور بارز واساسي سواء في طهران او في دمشق او بيروت لتشكيل هذا الائتلاف ضم مختلف الفصائل بالساحه الفلسطينيه باستثناء الموافقين على النهج التسويه السياسيه يعني واليوم وبفضل الدعاة على ابواب اوسلو وطابا ودافوس والقاهرة يريدونها بوابة العبور فوق الجسد الجسر الفلسطيني لمنع أي نهوض عربي وإسلامي وفرض الحكم الذاتي ليس على غزة وأريحة وحدها شكاكي was opposed to the Oslo Accords because he didn't want any kind of compromise with Israel. Islamic Jihad conducted several attacks during 1994 in response to them, mainly in tandem with Hamas. In the meantime, he began planning a major attack for the start of 1995. He recruited a cell in the occupied West Bank, which he intended should carry out a double bombing in Israel. It involved two members of the cell, Anwar Sukar and Salah Shakar, disguising themselves as Israeli soldiers and going to a strategically important crossroads between Tel Aviv and Haifa. It was called Beit Lid Junction, and on Sundays it was full of Israeli soldiers and reservists traveling back to duty after the weekend. The attack was planned for 9.30, on the morning of the 22nd of January, 1995. There were two suicide explosions three minutes apart. The first bomber, in military uniform, walked into the assembled soldiers and detonated his explosive belt. Then a second bomber blew himself up at the same spot as rescuers arrived at the scene of the first. An estimated 21 Israeli soldiers were killed in the two explosions, along with the bombers. 
Palestinian Islamic Jihad claimed full responsibility for the two attacks, which were the first suicide bombings by Fatih Shakaki's group. In the Palestinians, the Israelis, and on the world level, the attack of the Bet Lid was the most important and the most important thing to do with Oslo. The Israeli government at that time, Ezra Wiseman, considered it the most important أنها موجهة لهدف عسكري بحت الهدف كان عسكريا بحت كانت محطة يتجمع فيها الجنود والضباط عندما يتوزعون على المناطق المحتلة على أرضنا المحتلة وبالتالي لم يستطع أحد أن يخدش في مشروعية هذه العملية عملية بيتليد كانت في يناير 95 كانت من العمليات المهمة في مسيرة الجهاد في مسيرة الدكتور فتحي قائد وفي مسيرة المقاومة الفلسطينية يعني نحن نتحدث عن عملية خططت كما ينبغي وعن عملية نفذت كما ينبغي Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin went to Beit Lid to view the situation he saw the bodies he saw the protesters who were demonstrating against his, uh, I would say, control of the situation, demanding him to do something. That he came back to Tel Aviv, the Ministry of Defense, red with anger. He called in the chief of the Mossad, Shabtai Shavit, and ordered Fatrish Kaki to be killed immediately. He signed what is in the jargon of the Mossad, Red Sheet. Red Sheet is an assassination order against Fatrish Kaki. The Beit Lid attack seemed to harden Israeli resolve to deal with Shakaki and Islamic Jihad. The challenge for Mossad would be how to do so while Shakaki lived in Syria under the apparent protection of its president, Hafiz Assad. In January 1995, the armed Palestinian group Islamic Jihad carried out a suicide attack on a bus station between Tel Aviv and Haifa, killing 21 Israeli soldiers. There's no definitive account of events, but Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin reportedly ordered Mossad to kill the group's leader, Dr. Fati Shikaki, immediately. According to Israeli journalist Ronan Bergman, the mission was given to Kidon, the Mossad department thought to be responsible for executing opponents. Bergman says that there were both practical difficulties and political sensitivities with targeting Shikaki in Damascus because of his protection by Syrian President Hafiz Assad. When Prime Minister Rabin ordered Mossad to kill Fatri Shikaki, Mossad was uh, able to locate Fatri Shikaki in Damascus. He was operating under the hospice of uh, President, late President uh, uh, Assad, Hafez al-Assad, and he was his his private home and his headquarters were situated in Damascus, from where he um, commanded his operatives in the West Bank and in Gaza Strip. Mossad suggested to Prime Minister Rabin to take him out in Damascus either by exploding his car, shooting him, which was on a less priority because shooting is very risky for the shooter, for the sniper, or poisoning him. Um, however, there were operational um, risks because uh, Damascus is a very risky arena for Mossad to work. It was clear that if someone understand that someone tried to hit Fatri Shkaki, who is a respectable guest of uh, Syrian intelligence, immediately Syrian intelligence would shut down the borders, the seaports, the airports, and it would, very, it would be very hard for the assassins to get out. 
and a, 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 a Mossad assassin being caught in Damascus, the outcome is only death. The second one was political. The chief of military intelligence, Brigadier General Uri Sagi, uh, objected anything of that uh, sort of operation happening in Syria because of the political secret negotiation that were happening at that time between Israel and Syria. He said, if, if, if the Syrians would discover that we have killed one of their guests, this would be seen as a blunt violation of Syrian sovereignty and could jeopardize the, 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 the continuation of the secret talks, the, the political talks, the peace talks with Syria. A murder mission in Syria was therefore impossible. But Mossad agents are nevertheless reported to have entered the country and located Shikaki. They established that his personal security was poor and that virtually anyone could set up a meeting with him in Damascus. Finding him did not seem to be the problem. inside information. שיושבים שכל אחד בעצם עושה את החשבון שלו, זה משחק שנקרא לו משחק מודיעיני, שהוא משחק מלוכלך. حل إسرائيلي لمعادلة السكان والأرض هذه الخطة القديمة منذ عام 1967. Within a few months, Mossad is said to have penetrated Shikaki's inner circle and to have brought in one of its agents from Cyprus, Abdul Qadir Saleh. He's thought to have covertly worked his way into Shikaki's office, gained his trust, and become one of his closest associates. Saleh's job for Mossad in Cyprus had been to monitor the activities of PLO students there. He's thought to have become one of the key players in the plot to assassinate Dr. Fatih Shikaki. <laughs> שהיו הרבה מאוד שמועות על צעירים פלסטינים, מוצא פלסטיני, שיושבים בקפריסין, שבעצם יש להם קשר עם מנגנוני ביון אחרים. אני לא מוציא מכלל אפשרות את הדברים האלה, ותראה, מי שלא צריך דמיון יותר מדי מפותח. במשימות מהסוג הזה, זה מה שבעצם עושים בו שימוש. בקפריסין, אין צריך לספק שאני אומר inside information. אני חושב שבקפריסין היו לא מעט אנשים שאפשר היה מהם לשאוב בעצם מידע על זה, בין אם אתה משתיל אותם ובין אם אתה לוקח מהם את המידע. ולכן התמונה היא תמונה של, נקרא לזה, מנגנון או סיפור או פרשה שלמה של ריגול, של איסוף מודיעין, שזה חלק מהעניין שאנחנו מדברים בו. Israel military intelligence was able to intercept much of these communications. I would say that Fat Hishkaki was not paying enough attention, from his point of view, enough attention, attention to, to field security. I don't think there is a significance to this word, and in the end, there are a lot of conversations when there is a conversation about these things. Dr. Hishkaki was the goal for إسرائيل بلا شك وهي تحدثت عن أنه الهدف أنه الهدف الأول لها وبالتالي سواء كان هناك عملاء أم لم يكن إسرائيل في النهاية نفذت عمليتها وجريمتها باغتيال الدكتور الشقاقي موساد appears to have monitored Shikaki for several months his movements to Tehran Damascus Beirut and Libya would have been reported back to Tel Aviv. Some reports say that at one point in June 1995, Kidon got so close to him, he was within sniper range. But they didn't pull the trigger. Other 
unforeseen factors came into play. They did not succeed. They got very, very, very close to Fat Hishkaki. Fat Hishkaki didn't even know how close IDF snipers and Mossad assassins were to him uh, in mid-1995. Um, but it failed due to operational circumstances that were not anticipated by the intelligence. In September 1995, Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi, angered by Yasser Arafat signing the Oslo Accords with Israel, announced he was going to expel the estimated 30,000 Palestinians living in his country, causing widespread protests and a humanitarian crisis. Palestinians appealed to Gaddafi for restraint, and in October, Gaddafi issued an invitation for a Palestinian delegation to visit Tripoli. That delegation comprised Abu Musa Saeed Maracha from a party calling itself Fatah Intifada, leading PFLP figure Talal Naji, and Fatih Shakaki, representing Islamic Jihad. Shakaki Dahab Li Manakashat Kadiet, Al Palestinian, Al Mojidin, Al Hudud, Al Libya, Al Mosriya, Kamana Adam, and the Ada Yasser Arafat, Ila Palestine. كان هذا الحراك أو هذا التوجه ضد ما يراه القذافي كان القذافي يعارض هذا الأمر خاصة أن أن المفاوضات حصلت بعيدة عن عن رضا القذافي أو بعيدة عن أن يكون له دور أو معلومات في هذا الأمر فكحركة انتقامية من القذافي قام يعني بطرد كل الفلسطينيين الموجودين في ليبيا وقال لهم خلاص أنتم الآن عندكم وطن ارجعوا لوطنكم فكان الحدود هي الملجأ الوحيد فطبعا تجمع الفلسطينيين كافة من ليبيا على الحدود المصرية المصريين كانوا رافضين دخول الفلسطينيين إلى مصر فطبعا يعني حصلت مشكلة كبيرة وبقوا لمدة شهور طويلة على الحدود في في حالة وضعية سيئة جدا في مخيمات there was an international embargo on flying in Libyan airspace at the time. So Shikaki had to fly from Damascus to the closest location to Libya, Malta. He would then finish his journey by sea. This would have been the opportunity Mossad was waiting for. It gave them the chance to get to Shikaki outside Syria. Kidon was a step ahead of him and got to Malta before he did. On the 4th of October, 1995, Shikaki also arrived in Malta from Damascus and went immediately to the port to sail to Tripoli. But Kidon bided its time. They would wait for Shikaki's return trip. Meanwhile, Shikaki arrived in Libya and made for Sirt to meet Gaddafi. يعني كان الشهيد دكتور فتح شقيق جريء في موقفه وقال للأخ العقيد في ذلك اللقاء في تلك اللقاءات كيف يشبه عند الفلسطينيين وفي الصحافة العربية وبأنه يعني في ظلمه للفلسطينيين وطردهم من ليبيا وإبعادهم إلى الحدود كيف يشبهونه ب... 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 كأنه هتلر أو ك... يعني ك... بالتالي كان صادق وجريء في نقل الصورة من موقع المحبة وموقع النقد البناء الحقيقة لأنه يريد حل المشكلة يعني وبنتيجة اللقاءات حصلنا على قرار من العقيد بإعادة كل أهلنا إلى ليبيا وحلت المشكلة شيكاكي stayed in Libya for three weeks and then planned his return to Damascus again via Malta أنا سألته لل الشهيد دكتور فتحي قلت له كيف يعني ترتب امورك للسفر؟ يعني بامكانك تعود عن طريق تونس؟ قال لي لا استطيع. لماذا؟ قال انا بتونس عندي مشكله مع النظام في تونس. قلت له مصر؟ قال لي عندي مشكله مع النظام في مصر ايضا يعني. فهو جاء عن طريق مالطا واراد ان يعود عن طريق مالطا. الحقيقة نبهته رحمه الله إنه يعني مالطا خطرة ومالطا يعني معروف إنه في نشاط بارز للمساعد الصهيوني في مالطا 
معروف أن مالطا بلد مفتوح يعني فأيضا كان جوابه الحقيقة أنه الحامي رب العالمين يعني وهو رجل قدري ومؤمن ومن المؤمنين أنه يعني إذا جاء أجلكم لا تستأخرون ساعة ولا تستخدمون كما تعلم يعني إذا جاء أجلهم لا يستخدمون ساعة ولا يستأخرون كان مؤمن الحقيقة وأيضا الفرص ما مضيقة صراحة مش بس يعني هذا أنه ما في طريق آخر يعني Shikaki arrived in Malta on the 26th of October 1995. Kidon was everywhere, especially at the port. But Shikaki travelled on a Libyan passport under the alias Ibrahim al Shawish. He was hard, but not impossible for Kidon to identify. He planned to fly to Damascus the next day and so checked into the diplomat hotel under his alias Al Shawish at 10.20 in the morning. To the Maltese, Shikaki was simply a traveling Libyan businessman. That morning, he stayed in his room for about an hour, but at 11, went out to a travel agent to book his ticket to Damascus for the next day. But when he returned to the diplomat hotel, he had company. They were waiting for some time that he's alone in the street, and then a Yamaha motorcycle was driving uh, next to him slowly. Two people wearing uh, black helmets on the motorcycle. The guy at the behind pulled out a gun, shot Fatrish a few times. He is left dead. A uh, few bullets were shot in order to make sure that he is dead, to verify his, his, his death, and they immediately vanished. The assassins were taking aboard a ship, or a, a rubber boat, and then to an, an Israeli submarine, and sailed back to, to Israel. وصلنا في الساعة 22 أم أونك أم شي ريترات اللي بداو يهدو الناس تاعي قبل ما وصلنا هنا في التيبامين ام بيرو اكثر طرت في بدينا لي زامي تاع البيرسونا او نك ادين الساعتين و38 منوتا ام ماك داك الحين شنو انكشف اللي صار لابيات داك الحين كنا دوك يا سال الماجسترات و اللورا ستاينا ناملو الانفستيغاسيون او نك ام يدرو الهامس بالال ويهت نين كليتا اربا همسا ام لي كيلو كولا جوراسو جيفيري ال البستولا لي سباراتو افوليا كينت كينو سباراتي ات كلوز رينج جيفيري من دي من ديستانسي قريب حفنا نورمالمنت ويت 9 ملم بارابيلوم كي كوجو سباراتي بديك التيب تارما كي كل بالا دحلت وهارجت وما سبنيش من لازم تداول البوليت سبنا اللي كانوا 9 ملم شورت كانوا زار اسرى مش 9 ملم بارابيلوم تايب ام او او ما تيبيكامنت الموت كيف يزاو بش ام تقتل مالا من ما تقتل اوت هاف ناني سهرين جيفيري ات شورت رينج دي ار اكستريملي افيشنت الفات مثلا قتل لي كل خط كان قال لي كان نيغوسيانت نيغوسيانت ليبيان لي قتل مالتا صارت طاف لي دنت فيرو تال بيرسونا مقتوله الاخبار لو قلنات كان مانك مينسترو فوق زياره في اسرائيل مالتي لي قالوا له لي قتل ليدر تال جهات اسلامي كوف مالتا متى داك كان يعرف لي كان ميردر تسليمه فين ان اتل بزنس مان ليبيان اجفيري كان ويهت من لي كان يعرف اش كان فوق زياره اسرائيل وقالوا له من الاول. The shooting seemed to go exactly as Mossad had planned. As in Syria, Shikaki's personal security in Malta had been non existent, especially for such a wanted man. There were reports at the time, possibly from the Maltese police, of some kind of Libyan involvement. 
that Libyan intelligence may have tipped off Mossad about Shikaki's travel plans and hotel stay. But even those who worked on the case at the time are reluctant to make a definitive judgment. שקאקי היה יכול להיתפס את החיסול של פתחי אל שיקאקי. אם כן, זה תסריח לחוקמה הישראלית או למחברת הישראלית, ובכל תאקיד, يعني, القذافي أو نظام القذافي لعبوا دور الأساسي فيها وهما, وهو تنسيق لحضور الشقاقي إلى ليبيا وجدول الزمني عند يعني مغادرته من ليبيا وفي أي مكان سينزل يعني كل هذه الأمور بتكون مترتبة يعني القذافي لديه نفوذ قوي في مالطا كجزيرة مالطا بالكامل وكأنها امتداد ليبي يعني إن يحدث شيء هناك فأنا لا أستغرب أو لا أستبعد أن يكون للقذافي يد في هذا الموضوع باعتبار أن مالطا معروفة لديه نفوذ قوي وكبير جدا داخلها Palestinian Islamic Jihad survived Shakaki's death has continued its campaign and has claimed responsibility for over 30 suicide bombings of both military and civilian targets. It continues to be supported by Palestinians angry at Israeli security measures, perceived intransigence over peace talks and illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank. Indeed, Israel's very existence. In conclusion, both Uzi Rabi and Ronan Bergman seem clear that Shikaki's death was a Mossad assassination. And as such, it should be added to the list of the agency's extrajudicial killings. Fatah al Shikaki was a matter of the fact that he was a part of the Israeli government, who were able to say that this was a matter of the fact that he was a part of the Mossad and the Mossad that was a part of the Mossad. And that's why he was a part of the Mossad. תמימות דעים רק מהרגע שבאו פיגועי התופת האלה בתוך ישראל ובישראל ראש הממשלה יצחק רבין קיבל החלטה כנראה שכמבצע נקם על הפיגועים האלה צריך לפגוע במי שמנהל את הפעילות, פעילות הטרור של הג'יהאד האיסלאמי ואני חושב שדברים מהסוג הזה היו מאוד מאוד מעניינים באותה תקופה, משום שמה שפיתח כאן בעצם פתחי אל שקאקי זה זן אחר או סוג אחר של פעילות פלסטינית, הרבה יותר מיליטנטית, הרבה יותר אלימה, איזושהי חשיבה שאומרת שאנחנו לא נושיע את פלסטין, אלא רק בכיפח מוסלח, מאבק מזוין, אבל חזק מאוד. It's a very interesting story about the war between perpetrators, uh, people who I think would be seen by Palestinians as Palestinian heroes, but are seen from the, uh, from the Israeli point of view as no less than pure evil. People who 
took a firm stand in the Palestinian armed struggle, people who killed many Israelis, and the efforts that Israel was ready to devote in order to stop these people, and in some cases, like in the case of Atrishkaki, to kill them. There's also the question, was that effective? Meaning, the killing of Atrishkaki, did it change anything?